These are the objectives for 16.2, activation energy. It may be helpful to revise what natural log is. Uh, it's this number, to, it's to the base of this number. Now I've asked my trusted phys uh, physics colleague to explain to me how they managed to get this uh, Arrhenius constant, this frequency factor. Uh, and every time he explains it to me, I'm lost. So thank you physics uh, teachers or physicists for deriving this complicated equation for us. Thank you IB for putting it into the IB data booklet. And uh, what you need to know is that the Arrhenius constant represents a likelihood that collisions would occur at the proper orientation for a reaction. So by them deriving this equation for us, we can now, uh, we know the temperature, we know the gas constant, and that's the natural log. This is worked out for us by the physicists. And so we can work out the actual activation energy of an equation. So it's a little bit plug and play, I'm sorry, but that's how I will, uh, that's how I go about it. So what you basically do is you grab the temperature that the reaction was done at different times, you invert it, uh, and you take the natural log of the rate constant. You do that because that's what the equation asks for. The temperature has, has been divided by, it's been divided by the temperature with a negative value. Uh, the natural log has been taken. And once that's been done, that gives you a gradient. So this is the y equals mx plus c part of it. By creating this as an x, uh, you can then do the gradient and the gradient will give you the activation energy. So uh, these are the steps. Take the nat natural log of the rate constant on the y, take the inversion of temperature on the x, that will then give you the, the curve and then the gradient is equal to negative Ea on R, R being the gas constant. Uh, out of your interest for practical reasons, if you want to double the rate it's about a 10 degrees uh, Celsius increase. So if you're doing this experimentally in the classroom uh, that'll give you an idea of whether you are on track or not. So here is an actual question. Uh, there is these are uh, temperatures, so make sure you convert them to Kelvin, uh, and they're your rate constants. So what you need to do is then divide all those temperatures up and take the natural log of those constants. Now you can now just pick any two of these points and work out what the answer is, but the question will ask you to do it graphically, and the question will also ask you to verify that it is actually. Uh, a, a straight line. So you need to plot a couple of these points on here uh, just to prove that it is working. You are getting the straight line. And once you've done that then you can just grab any two of those points that will give you your gradient and then you can substitute those numbers in here. And so what you have here is the gradient here. Substitute the gas constant in here. There's the gas constant and the gradient that you worked out is here, so that's been substituted in down here, and when, as you got Ea by itself, and then it'll come out to 102,000 joules per mole. So as I said, it's a little bit just plug and play. Uh, know the key factors that I've talked about in this uh, short video, and that will be enough to get you through for the IB questions.